Hello again and uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar today. We are very excited. It's a topic that has been uh, recurrent. We have a lot, always we get a lot of questions about it. Uh, we also have a very high number of attendees, so we're really, really excited to to take you through this discussion today. Uh, just before to introduce the speaker, my name is Azad Sayer. I'm from uh, cloud for work as well as my colleague uh, Baha. So we are a company who helps organizations leverage their uh, investment in cloud and specifically uh, Office 365 and Microsoft Teams. So just to introduce the topic today, we have done a really interesting uh, survey that I would like just to share the results with you. So there are 43% of employees who are using instant messaging at work. And this is, uh, of course, that was accelerated due to the pandemic uh, situation. But what is interesting is that 51% of the people we have surveyed uh, answered that they are using WhatsApp and 41% are using Teams and then the, 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 uh, the rest are using other other tools. So it's important. It's interesting to see that still WhatsApp is being used for business related uh, communication while we see a lot of uh, uh, security issues and lack of functionalities and a lot of other features as well. So with that, I will pass it to Baha to take you to take us through this discussion. He has a lot of interesting you know, points to cover. And what's important is that we want your questions and answer and questions, we want your feedback. So please feel free to use the Q&A panel uh, to post all your questions and then we will answer them at the end of the presentation. All right, without further ado, I will introduce uh, Baha. Baha, it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Azat, and welcome everybody to the session today. So the reasons to attend this webinar. So we have a few, few reasons for today, as Azat already mentioned. But however, let me just kind of go and remind ourselves why are we here today? So the first reason, if your organization is subscribed to Microsoft 365, but still your employees use WhatsApp for business communication. Second one, if you want to convince your colleagues to move internal communication to Microsoft Teams, you want to reduce your usage of WhatsApp in business communication and become more knowledgeable about Teams. And you are curious about what really is Microsoft Teams. So my job for today is just directly and I hope the expectation will be that we understand more about Microsoft Teams and we want to know why we can, you know, why we need to switch like I would say switch to this application from WhatsApp because I understand that a lot of us we love the application that is WhatsApp because it's easy, it's simple, straight to the point and it has been there for so many years. However, what is really Microsoft Teams? Well, Microsoft Teams is a chat based collaboration platform by Microsoft. It is it allows you to have your document being shared, collaborate together, work and schedule online meetings have many more useful features for business communication and today that's my objective i want to show you everything that has to do with microsoft teams and the difference with whatsapp now again just to reiterate let's all remember that whatsapp is you know it's a social kind of uh, networking you know social media kind of uh, application so definitely you will see way more cap capability for Microsoft Teams and we will try to highlight it uh, in this session. So the agenda for today, I'll first go into the security side and then we will go into trying to understand if we use the application, you know, we have to chat, then we have to work on files and then we have to, you know, see the difference in conferencing and video calls and later on on the apps and best practices and we finalize by going to the next steps and Q&A. So let's go into the first point for today, which is security. For security, and as you all may know, WhatsApp is an application that we all, again, love. We use it. However, there are a few things out there in this application that kind of maybe annoys us. First of all, WhatsApp is a personal, I would say for me at least, it's for personal usage. I really sometimes try to separate between personal and between business. And when I get my colleagues on WhatsApp, then this is not really a, a personal anymore. It becomes a mix of business and personal. 
But the last eight months so far with Microsoft Teams, I have been able to just be on, on Teams for business communication, and I left outside all the WhatsApp just for family, for friends, and for whoever I wanted to get in touch with. So I would say let's uh, try to dig down a little more into how to use these applications and understand the privacy and security aspect here. So in terms of registration, I'm sure that everybody here knows that for WhatsApp, we have to give our numbers out to each other. We have to exchange these numbers in order to be able to communicate with each other. And this is really kind of a problem. It is a problem in kind of, you know, international status where regulations, because as an employee, if you are communicating between each other, you are exchanging each other's numbers. Not everyone really wants to do this. It might be some kind of cultural difference where you don't want to uh, give some your number to somebody else. So this kind of is a, is a problem. Whereas in Teams, all you need is your email address, and this is your organization email address. So it's simple as it gets for internet for internal kind of uh, organization. You are able just to exchange each other's emails and then be signed up to Microsoft Teams and be able to communicate with each other directly there. So in terms of registration, I would say it's easy for us to go into Microsoft Teams, just use the email and be able to communicate with us, each other without going into exchanging numbers. Second of all, and this is a big problem, I think from uh, what we hear stories about is that let's say we have a member who has been with us on a group chat and it, I'm sure that it happens. It might happen, but it happened with one of our clients at least that one of the executives had a group chat and this group chat, you know, he had so many participants in it on WhatsApp and he was sharing some kind of confidential information like a report. And inside of this group chat, he had one member who, you know, in like any organization, you move from one organization to another. And it happened to be that he moved to a competitor. So this person who has who has been there in the Microsoft uh, in the WhatsApp group moved to a new company. He was able to kind of go through the documents again that were shared on this group chat and he was able to kind of go try to review them. So we so what I'm trying to say, you don't want people to really go between organizations and take this kind of information uh, that you have on your own kind of uh, company for your own company and move it again to another company. I would say then this is why Teams really kind of offers here a better advantage because in terms of WhatsApp, it allows people really to stay in this, uh, to, to take whatever information is on this group by just storing them on the phone. So this is one thing that I, I would say Microsoft Teams is kind of safer in that aspect and it doesn't give you the headache of where is your kind of files have been downloaded on the mobile, or where has it gone and who's the employee that have, have gone with this data. In terms of storage and monetization, well, there's this is another issue and I'm this uh, at least happens for me and I'm always freaked out by, by WhatsApp because whenever I have a communication with somebody and then I start seeing all these Facebook advertisements out there about uh, about the topic that sometimes my, I might have talked about. So what I'm trying to say in terms of storage, one one aspect is here. Where is your store? Where is your data stored in uh, in uh, in WhatsApp? And where is your storage stored in Microsoft Teams? Well, if you are on WhatsApp, you don't know where that storage is really uh, being resident at. Well, if you are in Microsoft Teams, you know that your storage is in the warehouse, like in at least uh, Dubai or UAE, if you are communicating from here in the Middle East. So you know at least where your data is stored. It is under Microsoft Office 365, while WhatsApp, you don't have this kind of information. And if your IT really cares about regulating, you know, where your data is, then Microsoft Teams comes as a better aspect for you, a better solution in this area. Second of all, WhatsApp is really owned by uh, Facebook. So in case your data, you know, you never know where you've heard a lot of breaches, a, a lot of, you know, Facebook complaining about Facebook wh where they can monetize your data. So you really have this question mark always about your consumer data. Where is it being, uh, where is it going and is it being sold? 
we never know about this information. Whereas for Microsoft, it is an enterprise application. So really all, all your information are still within Microsoft and it's a secure. I'm sure everybody loves Microsoft because they provide us with Windows uh, and all the other products that we, we like and care about. In terms of the breach, and this is a really also important point, we have heard at least last year it has happened where WhatsApp was breached and uh, you know uh, there was a cyber attack where can malicious malware was available on this application and was stored on the phone and then it hacked into your operating system. Now a lot of us sometimes we don't know about this information it just shows up on the news but you don't want like all your files that you have already been communicating with your colleagues to someday be breached and you will have this data leakage and then your files are there with hackers around the world. In terms of Microsoft Teams, we haven't seen this and I hope not uh, because it is it is safe. It is under Office 365, Microsoft 365. So all your information are being safe out there. So that's why I would say in terms of uh, data security, let's go and give it some thumbs up for Microsoft Teams in this area. And I'm just trying to uh, explain here the difference between them. So I hope that I I explain as much as I can in terms of privacy and security. If we go, and this is the important part, and this is more fun, into the chat part. Now, let's say we have signed up, you know, we, we have WhatsApp on our uh, phones and we have Microsoft Teams on our phone. So what are we capable of doing in terms of the chat? And this is what we do day to day basis. We chat with our colleagues. So in terms of chat, the governance part comes into aspect. So imagine this colleague that was already left to the other company. Imagine he was a team owner uh, or a group admin on your WhatsApp group. Well, if he is a group admin on your WhatsApp group and nobody else is a group admin and then he leaves the company and he doesn't leave this or assigns anybody else a group admin, then this group is really uh, shouldn't be utilized anymore because you have somebody who left to another company. Nobody's a group admin anymore and he just left. And so this uh, group is useless because any information is shared with the other person since he has the mobile phone, uh, mobile number there as well. So in terms of this aspect, Microsoft Teams provides a better solution. Even if you have a group, you create a group where you are chatting with a lot of colleagues around your organization, then you, even if you leave to another organization, the IT members or the IT administration, since it's, it is an enterprise application, the IT administration will be able to remove you and assign somebody else this role of being the group or team admin or at least the group owner, let's say, so that you can you know, continue uh, conversation, somebody else will continue your conversation on this team and you don't have to really close this group at all. Instead of on WhatsApp, if you if somebody leaves and he's still the group owner, then I would say close that group and you will unless you know he gives it to somebody else. But if not, then this group uh, won't uh, won't be to, won't be used anymore. So you always uh, should care about this aspect of governance because it, it is really important uh, to understand. In terms of the second point, which is team topics. Now I'm sure that once this you have created a team on WhatsApp and it could be, for example, for us, at least at Club for Work, we have created one uh, on Teams and we can't really do what we do on Teams on the WhatsApp group because if we are on the WhatsApp and we have a group there available, if we have to discuss different topics, for example, we are talking about our sales, we are talking about our marketing, our new ideas. These are different topics and each one has its own content. If I start up this chat with Izzat, then we have to scroll up and find where that chat uh, was in the conversation on WhatsApp. However, on Microsoft Teams, what it does is that all these topics that we have can be still part of the same team. So we create a team for us and we have these topics categorized into different labels. We call them channels. And as you can see from the picture on the left, we have this cloud for work. This is a group and we have so many different topics that we are just focusing on separately and we have content conversation 
on each separately. If this was the case on WhatsApp, we would have to make five groups. But here on Teams, we just have one team, five channels. And if you are a user of Teams, you will know this and you will find this really beneficial. In terms of notification, and this is also important because of course on, on your WhatsApp, you are able to, you know, you mute some kind of groups, but still if, if this is similar to, you know, what you do on Teams as well, so you're not missing out too much. In Teams, it allows you all these topics to really highlight which one you want to get information on and which one you don't. So you can also play around your notification system. And on moving forward to the next one, audio and video call. I'm sure that we all, if we are at least in the UAE, you are not able to make these calls uh, or video calls on your WhatsApp because you know it's it's not it's blocked by the TRA, uh, so you can't do these. However, if you are on Teams, then you are able to communicate, video call, audio call anybody in your organization, as long as you just need their email address. You can call them uh, and then have a chat with them directly available without going into other separate ways to enable this uh, capability like in WhatsApp. So you can do this. All you need is your internet access and you can have uh, up to 300 participants in a call, in a single call. So imagine the scale of capability compared to, uh, to uh, WhatsApp. The last point I just want to say here and I forget it. It's about once you create these topics, you can even make some of them private topics and some of them public to available to everybody. So if you make some kind of, you know, you have some kind of confidential topic that you just want to discuss with one member inside of this team. Uh, so you can also do this in uh, in uh, in teams. And I'm not sure this is, I mean, of course, this will not be available in, uh, in WhatsApp because you will have to create a separate conversation with this person. So that's a big difference between having a separate conversation and having a separate topic that has confidential within a team uh, where you're discussing with uh, with your one person or a few per people who you invited to. So let's go into the next and third one, which is files. Files is the next step. After you have chatted with your colleagues, there is this most important is sharing the files. And it's really here about all in WhatsApp. You usually once you up share a document, you know, you upload it and then it's available there on your on your, you know, you open your files there and the, the application and you see your files, but they're not really organized. You see them a lot of different files uh, under above each other, so it's really a messy out there. Whereas if we go to this collaborative application, it is uh, you can upload and create folders, structure your files within a specific topic and channel. So imagine we had we had created already these four topics. We were talking about marketing. So inside of marketing, we can create folder and we can create different topics. So here on the picture on the left, you can notice that I've created for this topic that was online course, let's say, I've created a budget folder for it. And in the budget folder, I've made so many different folders like 2019, 2020, what is the one for 2021? And I have just different files there. I can use this Microsoft Teams to upload files, to create new files directly from it. This is not happening on WhatsApp. And in terms of the size of the files, 16 megabytes is all you can do in one file, whereas Teams, it's way larger than this file. And you will notice you have up to, I mean, one file is really way more size than 16 megabytes, so it's really small. And this again highlights why, you know, Microsoft Teams is for enterprise and WhatsApp is just for fun, personal between all of us, simple, but really not for your business communication between your colleagues. Co-authoring is the second point that I want to highlight. In co-authoring, what I'm trying to say here is that in each of these kind of topics that you have, you can upload, you've already uploaded documents, correct? So what's next? Well, you can work on these documents at the same time. 
on this Excel, Word, whatever application you're using in terms of Microsoft Office, Excel, PowerPoint, you can directly work together on just by editing on Teams. And then you are co collaborating, you are communicating with each other, what changes you want to make. So instead of just like sending even an email about this uh, topic, about this document, you can do everything on this just one app. Whereas on WhatsApp, I don't see this. It's, I mean, it is really not for collaboration out there. It's just for sharing maybe a file, but it's really not about co-authoring out here. And this is where we see a kind of big difference on the uh, app for Teams. Another one that I love to do is signing documents. Well, my laptop, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that my laptop offers this pen. I mean, I'm not trying to advertise about my pen, but in general, this pen will allow me to open this application that are Microsoft Teams on my desktop and just sign whatever document I want. Since, you know, Microsoft Word is available on this app that is Teams, I can just directly sign it there and send it back to my colleague. So it's also available there to have these different capabilities that you don't see uh, anywhere else. In terms of storage, the third point here, well, Teams is powered by SharePoint. And if you've heard about SharePoint, it's really a big app about and really valuable about structuring your folders, your content. Uh, so it is really, it is powered by that app. So if you have all these folders that you've created on Teams, all of them, as you notice, they are available on SharePoint as well. So you not only have one app now, if you want to go back into the backup system and try to check more, you can do this by navigating to, uh, to SharePoint but you don't really need to, but if in case you do want to explore more options, you can do this in this app. So it's all part of integrated with the Microsoft. In terms of uh, connecting with other, of course, it's similar, I think, to also WhatsApp where you can uh, add a storage space like Google Drive, but here you can do it also on Teams. So it kind of matches in terms of store adding another storage space. In terms of the all files on my app, and this is really important. On WhatsApp, whenever I get all these pictures, all these documents, I usually, once I, I mean, download them or when I see them, they're now available on my phone. Whereas on this application that is Teams, whatever I do, it's still on this app. Nothing is downloaded, everything is online. So you go online, you just access this application, and then you view your work is there. You don't need to download them. So they're not taking space from your phone and they're all available still on this app. That is whatever megabytes, I mean, you've downloaded this application on. Whereas on WhatsApp, I've, I mean, I take it from a personal experience and my uncle used to tell me always, how can I really not allow people to download, to, to send me all these pictures and have them all on my phone because it's taking space. And this is really frustrating. So in order to avoid this kind of space storage uh, on your phone, not only on WhatsApp, on your phone, well, this is where Teams comes in and it's just, you don't know, as a, as a work kind of tool between all of you guys, you don't need to uh, download them, you just view them online. So you're doing great there. Now, again, just want to remind, sorry, just want to remind everyone here uh, that for questions, feel free also to put them there. Uh, so far, we've ta ha tackled three points and now we will go into the uh, other three half. So if you have questions, don't forget to put it on the chat box. Uh, we'll go to the conference and video calls. So in terms of conferencing and online meetings, well, here there's one thing about it and it is that you can do a lot of different features here you can have on Teams. But let's start, first start with schedule meetings. So can anybody schedule meetings on WhatsApp? Not really. If you do, <laughs> do let me, but you cannot. However, on Teams, you can do this directly on your application that is Teams. You can schedule meeting with your colleagues directly easy by going to your calendar that is available part of Microsoft and you can schedule these meetings so you can really be productive. And even if you want to communicate with external members, all you need is their email address. You don't need their phone number. Just tell them, send me your email address. If they don't want to exchange numbers, send me your email address. 
and I'll send you an invitation for a meeting and then we can hop on on a call and do this meeting. In regards to recording meeting, again, this is important because as an organization, as a somebody who wants, you know, you, you have all your colleagues with you, some of them might not be available for a call and you really want to, uh, you really want them on the call, but they can't be available. So what you can do is record this meeting and you can record it and send them uh, this video so they can go back and view this, whatever happened on this call and be able to take the notes and understand more of what on what happened on that specific call. I'm sure nobody can see this in WhatsApp. Going into the host conference, here there's an option for live event where you can host up to 10,000 people. It's like what I'm doing now. So today we have this webinar that is on the live event feature available uh, on Teams. Uh, and this one will allow you to host meetings up to 10,000 people. So it is for webinars, it is for town hall meetings and many more stuff. If you uh, want to have, have productive meetings, this app, and we're just showing you now, I'm just sharing my screen and this is valuable. You don't see this in, a, in many other apps. So I'm sharing my screen and I'm showing what I'm doing. However, apart from that, you can do several options when you schedule meetings there. You can mute participants, you can share a screen, you can take notes and even create tasks to follow up on action items. And this is through an app called Planner and will be task and this is available in Teams. So you will be not only to, you know, have a meeting, but also assign task, create this kind of task management, uh, you know, use this task management tool that is available part of Microsoft Teams uh, to be able to be productive after a meeting as well. Now we go into this apps point. And here, this is where Planner, you will hear more about not only Planner, there are so many other apps available. So let us try to understand more on what are the apps that are available. So now we understand that we can do talk, we can collaborate with colleagues, what else? And we get this question, I mean, a lot that, I mean, we people think that Teams is just one application, but it has way more uh, applications on it that are integrated. So one of them is at least, you know, you had the option to other to add other apps free and paid. So whatever you may you might have already subscribed to, uh, you can just add this as a as a shortcut on your application there. So there are plenty, not even hundreds, there are 500s, maybe a lot of applications available and all of them just to enhance your experience on this application to enhance your productivity. So imagine you can also if you have subscription for Adobe Sign, Let's say you don't have your uh, your uh, laptop, you're using your desktop, and you have you already want to create Adobe Sign allows you to create you know, your signature. Then it's integrated. All you have to do just simple integration with it. Press on Adobe Sign, sign in into your user account directly on the app itself. You don't have to open web browser, and then you just uh, log in and take whatever you need from there and add it to your Teams. So it's really as simple as that. Office 365 ecosystem. Again, Microsoft Teams is part of the world of you know Office 365, so it has all these other applications that you've heard of, like Power BI. Uh, if you heard of OneNote, I mean, I'm sure you've seen all these apps somewhere along in your Windows, but these are all are available within Teams. You, so what they've made here, Microsoft, is that they put all of these together so that you can utilize them as well. It's not about only subscribing to Microsoft and using Teams, but it's also about utilizing other apps available within your subscription. So all of them could be accessed directly for free on this uh, on this application. In terms of adding shortcuts, well, imagine that you have a website that you like to access every time, but instead of going just to Google to type it out and you know accessing it from the web browser, what you can do is simple, add it as a shortcut within a, a channel. So of course, if you are a user of Microsoft Teams, if not, what I'm trying to say here is that remember that we have one topic and in this topic it can we can have different you know conversation. We have we can have files for this for this conversation. 
And we can also add some kind of shortcuts that we need to uh, view whenever we need to. And this one, for example, I made it as our website, as Cloud for Work. So as a team, we are, instead of going back and forth and trying to check on the website, we have it available for us just to view. Of course, if it's your, you have your own website, internet, you can, you know, you open this website and you can view what are the updates in the organization. So this is one, and you can also add tabs as documents. So you, tabs, I mean shortcuts to your documents where you can directly access them uh, as tabs. But I won't go too much here. I'm just trying to show you the capability and the really power of Teams. And this is uh, on app side. You can even develop apps on this application itself and there's an app studio for it. But we won't go for that because this is more for the advanced. But I'm just highlighting the capability here and what really you should need to tell your yourself and your colleagues so about in Teams. So going to the best practices, and this is really what uh, the second one that we're really here for is what is, why are people resistant to this change, really? So few clients, you know, after our engagement with them, we've, we've listened to them and we have these kind of, a lot of questions that come in, but I've just highlighted a few questions here. And there are, what's in it for me? A lot of the users would ask this question, how is it easy to use Teams? How much time will it turn to learn Micro Teams? Will Teams stay in the long run? And I would say for this one, we have you know our six ways to answer these and to enable your organization to utilize this application. So in terms, just on the last point on how Teams will stay in the long run, this application is the evolution of Skype for Business. So you won't see Skype for Business anymore. You will see Micro Teams and a lot of uh, a lot of us will be using this application in the long run. So if you jump on the wagon of Microsoft Teams from WhatsApp, you are learning something that will be for the future as well, and it will improve your kind of productivity. So let us check the six ways to educate your users about uh, Microsoft Teams, and you will notice that I have this kind of diagram on the left side, and this is the at car model. So here at Cloud for Work, what we focus on is this model that is at car mainly this is a change management international known this is international known uh, uh, methodology uh, you will start by awareness desire knowledge ability and reinforcement here mainly uh, all these kind of uh, five diagrams you see here awareness desire knowledge will go through a little bit uh, on them but this is a great methodology in case you really want to spread the change in your organization. You want them really need, they need to move to teams. So how can we enhance this? How can be the catalyst to make this happen? Well, first we have to, you know, spread awareness and this is really important. Awareness could be from one aspect that is inform users about the risk. You don't want, you have risks, which are, you know, that your data, you're staying secure. There's also awareness about this application that is micro Teams that is really useful, beneficial, and valuable to you in the long run. So all these are part of awareness. Second, in terms of desire, and all of them are equal to each other. Let's again remember this. So nothing like awareness is equal as same as desire, as knowledge, as ability. So all of them you should work on all uh, equal. In terms of desire, there's scenario identification. So once you really make this awareness ar around your department, what is the next step that you need to do is meet with the people who are using WhatsApp uh, really more than Microsoft Teams. Try to understand what are they, why are they using WhatsApp and how can they adapt to this new technology Microsoft and move their conversation there and be more productive. So it's really about identifying there the scenarios that what they do in general on WhatsApp and they tr try to apply it to Teams itself. One aspect is putting too many constraints from our engagement. We've noticed that many organizations, once they put put on a new app, they have the as IT team, they go into trying to emphasize on security and many other aspects. However, sometimes they really lock it down. So they might take some features from it and then users will start questioning, is this app really useful for me or should I just stay on WhatsApp? 
so that's why we ask always, you know, to as a as a team of IT to do their, you know, the the job quick and really efficiently, but try to understand what is the value that the users will get out of this app. If you are taking out some features from them, then they will find a way to use other app. In the end, users want to do whatever. Sometimes it's easy, but if you make this application Microsoft Teams easy for them, controlled. It will be the way to adopt. It will be the new technology that they will adapt easily to. Fifth and the sixth point will be about selecting you, and this is, comes in the capability and in the knowledge. Here, what you want to do once you have the team members who use this application, let's call them champions. These are the early adopters. Once they are the early adopters, you train them, you make additional trainings for them, and you incentivize them to share the knowledge with their colleagues. So it's really important to really do this in order for them to share, you know, what they've learned on Microsoft Teams with the others, and then it becomes a unicorn. They, these are the people who are the unicorns of movement, of being the catalyst for change. And then the others, uh, by champions, I mean, it can be anybody in the organization, managers, any person here. It goes from them and then they're spreading the word about the usefulness of this app and then they share how they can utilize this app better. So then it becomes uh, more of, we, we add to them more on trainings and training material. So once you have those, then people will know how to use this app. It's really about using the app. If you explain really the easiness of using this app, which is Microsoft Teams, then people will adopt it easily, will know the benefit, and we will see that Teams is not too different and simple from WhatsApp. It's really the same. For me, I've been using Teams for the last eight months, not advertising for it, but I haven't used WhatsApp for some time because it's really the same kind of chat I can do. I can do file, can do everything on Teams. So why not do it uh, directly there instead of using the application that is WhatsApp? Now I'll move into the last part, and this is, uh, you know, our takeaway, and then we will go into uh, a few uh, the final kind of words there. So on the takeaways, in security aspect, we understand that, you know, in WhatsApp we have this question: Where's your data? Whereas in Teams, you know that it's part of your Series 65. In meetings, you can make up to, you, I'm not saying anything against team, uh, Microsoft uh, WhatsApp. It's really useful to make calls, but it's just personal again. And you can have up to eight people on uh, meetings. Uh, as before, you know, for uh, teams, you can schedule up to 300 people. It's easy to share files on WhatsApp, but it lacks collaboration. It's whereas on teams, share, collaborate, do it all together. Apps, you can notice it's only one app, whereas Teams has so many different apps, have you noticed? So my personal recommendation, and it's the final one, is just use WhatsApp for your personal use and use Teams for business use. If you weren't convinced by the end of the session, then I haven't done my job well, so let's go into the, we'll go into the Q&A where you can tell me more and ask me your questions to convince you more why we need to, you know, make this kind of move uh, and inform others to make this move as well. As the next step for us as Cloud for Work, uh, and thanks again, you know, for for uh, for your patience with us, with me at least. What we'll do next is this link, this presentation will be shared, you know, with you for whoever attended the session. Uh, and the second part will be that we are offering a free consultancy for for the webinar attendees. So you can get in touch via the connect at cloudwork.com. I'll just leave this for a few minutes, uh, just a second or two, but you can take this note and you can, uh, we'll connect with you as well, uh, so that in case we, you wanna evaluate your Office 365 and also more about like people still stubborn on using WhatsApp, then we'll try our best to help you out there. I'll move to the last kind of fear part, which is the time for Q and A. So here it's time for you guys to really all the questions we'll try to answer. And I hope this session was useful. Again, uh, my take on this one is I used WhatsApp. I like this application. It is for personal. I will. I don't think I'll stop using it for personal with my family and friends. But for your own sake, for your own kind of trying to separate between work and personal, I would say I, I went for teams. 
because I was able to, you know, separate between work and this one. And whatever I finish, you know, honestly, I finish, I log off six o'clock. This is it. And then uh, on Microsoft Teams, you log off, you don't get any notification. And then you wake up on the second day and then you log in and that's easy as it gets. So uh, I'm looking forward to your questions and thank you again for your time. Uh, I might be joined, I think, from Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so uh, thank you uh, for your the valuable inputs. And I think I can see your passion, you know, and the topic and you're passionate about both WhatsApp and Teams and how, you know, to separate between the private and business uh, life, so you could say. So we have questions. Uh, also, please, I mean, feel free to add more. We have already some questions that we're going to go through. Uh, just use the Q&A panel to, uh, to, to post your questions. So we have the first question uh, that I'm going to read for you. So how can I communicate with external parties using Microsoft Teams? OK, OK, great. Uh, thanks for the question. In regards to communicating with the external vendors or external parties, let's call them, I would say if you have one person, you know, you know, the external party, they have this a lot of people with them and they have all of these people have their email address, right? And if they can just provide you <coughs> their Microsoft email address, then you can start scheduling with them calls. Uh, all they need once you are a person who invites them for a call, you schedule from your calendar, you send it out to them, they will get an invitation on their email. They log into this, you know, this this meeting and then they uh, they create their kind of, you know, it's easy to sign up for free on, on Teams, so they will create it. Now, I'm assuming that they don't have a Teams account as part of their organization. So they can do this, they sign up, it just takes a few seconds and then they can be on the call. They can even use the app, <coughs> excuse me, they can even use the app to communicate with you and have a chat with you uh, there for free. However, if you, their organization does have Microsoft 365 subscription, then it's easy for them just to, if their IT team allows them to communicate with external vendors, same like it's just a switch of a button. If your organization has, you know, allows also to communicate with external vendors, then both of you can communicate within seconds. So you will be able just to put their email address uh, and directly just chat with them. You know, it's like WhatsApp, you put their number and start chatting with them as long as they have the application. Same here, this is what will happen. They, you take their email address, communicate with them and start, you know, collaborating together at any point of time. It's, it becomes like WhatsApp, really. Uh, so yeah. as I explained, two ways, if they don't have uh, teams as part of their organization, just sign up for free uh, as long as they provide their email. Second point is tell their IT team to enable this feature of collaborating, uh, you know, with external vendors and then they can chat with you at any point of time. Great, great. This is really uh, cool. So this next question is about, I think uh, someone is saying that my people are already using WhatsApp. I mean, they're saying it's simple, convenient, they are familiar with it, how to encourage and motivate them to move. I, I think I can maybe help you here, uh, Maha. So this kind of relate to the last slide or the, the, two, the that you mentioned about change management. So, I mean, um, definitely it's kind of nature of human beings to be uh, comfortable with the technology that they've been using for a long time. It's easy, simple. Uh, it was introduced much earlier than Teams. Um, and it was, of course, it, it became popular because it's easy and simple. So again, we're not saying WhatsApp to be to stop using WhatsApp. Just use it for personal, uh, personal, private communication and the way to to motivate them to use Teams. So again, we are talking about change management here. So if we, if you cannot identify um, and some, I mean, what's in it for them, uh, something that will improve their day-to-day -day communication, their day-to-day -day operation, they will never change. So there is a little bit of homework to, to be done here is, I mean, to identify the use cases, identify the scenarios where, you know, uh, what uh, teams will help them uh, improve something you know in their day to day in their day to day in their uh, in their business communication and this is where you they, they will start getting uh, coming on board with you to change uh, to start using teams or other uh, other technologies yeah, so yes. yeah. uh, awareness uh, sorry, is important just, identifying yeah. the use cases and then that will motivate them to use yeah yes and yes, just Mark. last point on it just like, sorry to interrupt as uh, just last point on it it's always important to recognize the people who use this application micro teams who want to make the change it's also important to recognize them it's simple as gestures as maybe give them any simple gesture like a thank you or a recognition around your colleagues 
uh, just to highlight that that these people who are taking this new initiative to learn a new technology that is simple uh, and then everybody will be kind of uh, jump on the same wagon. Uh, so again, I, I really want to say that appreciate, I mean, recognize those people uh, in simple gestures. And I think this will also help out in terms of making the change around the organization. Yeah, great. So the next question is uh, about uh, WhatsApp for Business. So what is the difference between WhatsApp for Business and Microsoft Teams? OK, so, Baha, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, thank you. Uh, in terms of, I think from Microsoft Teams perspective and at least just to explain what is WhatsApp for business, WhatsApp for business is really for business. It is your application. If you have your own business, let's call it shop. You have several additional features there that help you kind of uh, communicate with your customers. So it's really about not like internal communication. It's more about having uh, communication with the customer that is an outside, out, somebody who's outside and you're trying to sell them something. So you can initiate few features that are available. Uh, for example, uh, you know, you can put on WhatsApp for business stuff like, you know, when is your working time, working hours, you can add your website there. Uh, so it's really about uh, customer, uh, you know, business to customer, B2C, let's say, or B2B. Whereas your teams is is mainly about you know your collaboration, so it's mainly I would say for business aspect with customers, you know you're not selling, uh, you know WhatsApp, you're not gonna communicate with your customer directly there. You're gonna communicate with your internal organization. You're gonna communicate with your vendors, somebody who wants you know who supplies you something, uh, who you supply something to. This is where Teams comes in. So if you want to go for WhatsApp for business or this, one, it's just we would like I would I wouldn't mind doing it on their webinar on that aspect. But just to understand the purpose is really important for what is each used for. Uh, and I'll leave it here because it's really uh, I mean, just to explain it here. Uh, I'll stop here and we can yeah. proceed with it in another time. Yes, thank you. Uh, we just going to take two more questions. Um, so one is uh, is Microsoft Teams app available on all mobile devices? I can just say yes. So it's available on all the iOS and uh, Android versions, and as well, of course, on Windows, Mac, and it's basically uh, iPads. Uh, it's now available to be used on any any uh, any device that you have. Uh, is there a way to set working hours in Microsoft Teams? Uh, where you don't get disturbance. I think you covered that, Baha. So there is a way to also put in uh, quiet hours. So after, for example, six o'clock, if you want, and you can set up your we weekends as well, and you will you you won't get notifications uh, on Teams, and uh, and that's really uh, that's convenient. You're not muting the whole com chatting and conversations, but you're setting working hours. Uh, as well as out of office hours as well, uh, if you want to do that. Uh, the last one uh, we have here is from Fatima. Is it, how can Cloud for Work help me? This is not clear. I think this is this is maybe uh, easy to answer. So I mean, as Cloud for Work, like we said in the beginning, we are helping organizations uh, adopt new technologies and provide them with change management uh, services to help them, you know, uh, move from an old technology to a new technology. So um, so we provide professional services uh, to help you in this uh, shift to make sure that they are properly using Microsoft Teams, for example, or any other component of uh, Office 365. Uh, I think we have to stop here, Baha, because we are already kind of five minutes past uh, the time. Um, I would like to, from myself to thank you all for attending. Uh, as we have mentioned, you will receive an email with the recordings that you can feel free to share with your colleagues, uh, with anyone in your organization who could be interested in that. You can as, as well share it with the, the WhatsApp users who are still uh, using WhatsApp for business communication, but you want them, you want to shift them so that they can go through it quickly. Um, and just to remind you, we are also offering free consultancy if you want to our help with change management with uh, workshops, trainings. I mean, all these things that we can help you with to shift your users to the new technology. So uh, again, thank you. Thank you for attending. Um, that was great, great uh, attending. I mean, a great number of people who attended. Great questions. 
Um, Baha, thank you so much for your inputs and your, your passion about the topic. Um, and if you want to say some words before we close the, the webinar. Oh, uh, no, thank you, Azat. Uh, again, this is, uh, I mean, I would like to, for the attendees to always, you know, suggest on our LinkedIn, LinkedIn page, uh, let us know what are other uh, topics they want to, for me at least, or us as a team to explore. Uh, do connect with me on LinkedIn as well if you want. And thank you again for your time. I, uh, this is really about just, you know, informative session. I know I have, a, I had, I mean, there was a lot of information but, to digest, but it's really just, yeah, this uh, it, topic is really kind of important because uh, we, as you know, moving forward in this kind of COVID, at least area, era, uh, in these times we have to separate and we are doing a lot of online meetings. So if in case we can separate between, you know, these apps, what is really for personal, what is really for uh, business, then it will help us also stay sane. And uh, that's my kind of last point on it. <laughs> Thank okay, you. great. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye for now. All right.